Hi, I'm Lance Lucero, Product Manager of Astronomy for Celestron, and welcome to another installment of Dear Celestron. In kind of a follow-up to my last video, Understanding Magnification, where I answered the question, how much magnification can a scope use? I wanted to touch base on another commonly asked question at star parties. How far can your telescope see? This is another difficult question to answer. If we're in dark skies, I'll aim my laser pointer at the Andromeda galaxy, and I'll say, see that fuzzy patch of sky? That glow is from a galaxy two and a half million light years away, and you can see it with the naked eye. I remind them that it's not the distance that matters, but the brightness. Telescopes are powerful not because they help you see distance, but because they help you see fainter and smaller objects than you would with the naked eye. In my last video, I talked about how magnification works. Now let's look at aperture and resolution. What is resolution? To put it simply, without getting into all the technical details, it's the telescope's ability to see smaller and finer detail. The main factor in determining the resolution of a telescope is the aperture. There are other factors as well, such as the quality or the lens or the mirror, or the wavelength of light that you're measuring and other stuff, uh, but we're gonna ignore that right now for simplicity's sake. It's safe to say that the larger the telescope's aperture you're using, the finer and the fainter the detail you will be able to see. A classic example of how different size apertures affect what you can see can be found by looking at Epsilon Lyrae, the famous double-double star. Under stable seeing conditions, Epsilon Lyrae appears to be a single star to the naked eye. But when observed through a small 50 millimeter telescope, you'll see that this star is actually made up of two stars of equal brightness, but very close together. Look at this pair of stars in a larger telescope, and you'll see that each of those stars splits into two more, making a total of four. The larger the aperture you use, the more defined the separation is between those component stars. Larger telescopes give you the ability to see smaller details. Looking at the moon in a smaller aperture scope can allow you to see the large craters. But smaller craters become visible when using larger apertures. Move to a much larger aperture and you'll see craters within craters. Looking at Jupiter in a small scope, you can see its moons, equatorial belt, and possibly a hint of the great red spot, if it's facing Earth. Larger telescopes that collect more light will start to see details within the equatorial bands, smaller storms and spots. Larger telescopes will even show more color, making the great red spot pop out even more. Because you're looking at the surface area of the mirror, doubling the size of the aperture of the scope increases your light gathering by a factor of four. For deep sky objects like nebulae and galaxies, larger apertures will allow you to see fainter detail not visible in smaller scopes. So the question of how far can a telescope see is the wrong question to ask. You can see the same objects at the same distances with different telescopes. The question is how small or faint of a detail can you see within that image? As with magnification, to get the most from your resolution, you will need a night of stable atmospheric seeing. Have your scope at thermal equilibrium with the external temperature and have the optics well collimated. I hope this has answered your questions. Please stay tuned for more Dear Celestron videos. On a side note, another common question that I do get at star parties is how big of a scope would be required to see the flag on the moon. I actually crunched the numbers and it would take an optical telescope approximately a kilometer in diameter and then it would see the flag as a single pixel. Not enough to tell what it is, but to tell that there is something there. That is also assuming that there's no atmosphere between the scope and the moon, so not very practical. Thanks for watching and clear skies.